I found this game when I was traveling with my dad on one of his business trips. I had played Desperados when at Dead or Alive and of course loved to pursue those PC game shelves whenever we went out. Remember when there used to be as many PC games as there were console games on the shelves? Well, I'm going on a tangent, but I picked it up seeing it was the same company, Spellbound Entertainment and Strategy First. Thinking it may be similar to Desperados, I mean, it is Robin Hood, who wouldn't want to be Robin Hood. I looked at the glossed over pictures and was immediately taken. I had to play this game, again, and I did. I've in fact played this game almost as much as i played Desperados. I just really enjoy this aspect of being able to control your units and take down several baddies through some espionage and stealth. Robin Hood The Legend of Sherwood was a brilliant new take on the Robin Hood story. Set in the fantasy world, obviously. Robin Hood, is he real? Well, we will leave that to historians to find out. For this game, he does exist, and so does the famous Prince John with his oppressive rule. If you don't know this story, King Richard has gone on crusade and is being held prisoner, while his brother, Prince John, rules over his lands, constantly taxing the peasants with an iron hand while forcing them to work harder and harder. Only one man. Well, in this case, several men can take up the struggle against the oppressors, Robin Hood with his band of merry men. Previous Robin Hood games typically crash and burn with the attempts at being either first person or that third person perspective. While the idea normally works and the concept is there, it just doesn't seem to meld. With this version of the Robin Hood story, we see the more isometric feel with several different characters fighting, sneaking, and stealing from the rich all at one time. If you've never played a tactical strategy game like this before, then what you do is control several characters at once in a mission. The mission may have several goals, kill the main bad guy, steal a specific item, save someone from prison, or just general craziness. What makes these types of games fun for me, and have a ton of replayability, is that you can pretty much proceed with the mission how you see fit. There are some characters who can knock an enemy out, helping you do a no-kill playthrough, or just mow down all opponents as you clear a swath to the end. Each environment on the mission is unique. Sometimes you do come back to specific locations to replay a map, but the site is different. Either it is now a foggy morning or late at night. I think there is actually enough variety to mix up the maps. It helps that the game doesn't follow a specific linear set mission path. As you have choices to pick what missions you want to go for, there are several big towns you'll end up going to. In addition to the main towns, small raid sites like looting a convoy or seeking a new main character, there are siege battles. I personally love these as they can range in hardness as the level system has 12 shields you need to take down before you can bring that castle down. To get shields, you can send out your merry men to do a specific mission to take out an arms caravan or several other options. If you can't get enough shields knocked out before the mission, you can do specific goals within the mission while you play, letting you open areas by lowering the drawbridge or doing other specific tasks. No matter the missions you play, they're all a puzzle you have to solve with different and interesting soldiers. From low-level footmen to powerful knights that will not succumb to a heavy fist to the head. The music and voice acting is also outstanding in this game. Just like the previous installment for Spellbound's Desperados, the voice acting is extensive and the music takes you to that new fantasy world. To look in the gameplay, the point is to lead your team of units through the missions while avoiding the ever-watchful eyes of guards. What makes this game different than Desperados or the Commando series is that besides the main heroes like Robin Hood or Little John, you can train up your heroes and not heroes at the home base. One thing I loved about this game is that you may have a character like Will Scarlet, who is very good at melee attacks with his giant ball and chain swinging around his head. Though you can take another unit and have them train to do similar style attacks. Each mission you go on will leave several units behind. They can do a mixture of things, make resources that will help specific characters have more of something. For example, to provide Robin with more arrows, as it is a limited resource. There are a ton of options for resources, apples to throw, eat a leg of lamb to help heal, clovers, and many more. In addition, they have an old man decked out in sparring gear that you can assign a merry man to train with, leave for a mission and come back, and now that character will have plus one on their melee stat 
There's also training in archery, where you stand on one side of the creek shooting over to the next. There you can get plus one for archery after each mission for those left behind. In the end, this helps a ton when, say, a main character like Robin or Little John isn't available for a mission, either due to the story or something else. Your main characters like Robin Hood or Little John will have three abilities to use in each mission, while the non-heroes or the side heroes only have two abilities that they can use, for example, healing or knocking someone out, eating a leg of lamb, or whistling. Each bad guy has a cone of vision you have to avoid as you venture through the mission. To help with your success, you can slowly but surely in incapacitate each of these soldiers. The game does allow for the go in guns blazing approach, though it's not recommended as you won't have enough health or ways to heal in the beginning. While later on the enemies of course will get more challenging, harder to just go in all Rambo style. Plus. The more people you end up killing will end up lessening the amount of merry men you can recruit at the end of each mission. The game is about stealth and maneuvering your team to the objective without alerting the enemy. The ultimate ninja game. To do this, you can use those aforementioned apples to distract a guard so you can slip by. Maybe use an arrow to take out a specific item in the environment to get a guard's attention, or just use shadows as your way to move. One thing I found playing this, and many games like this, is to always watch out for those wily NPCs, as they will still alert the guards of your presence. A neat feature I greatly enjoyed that is only really for this game is that you use your mouse to fight. I know, I know. That's how you fight in most games. Well, yes, you'll be able to use your bow and attack options like a normal game, just a point and click type mentality. You can do something a bit different while engaging in melee combat with an enemy. You draw a line with your mouse. Yep, that bright orange line right there. So you can click to defend, then click and move your mouse in an attack move. Do a circle, then your character may spin around in a circle, which depending on your character may help to disable a large number of enemies. The story really pulls it all together for me. It helps that the Robin Hood story is, without being cliche, a tale as old as time. You follow Robin Hood as he loses his lands, is trying to recover what is taken from him. He gathers old names like Friar Tuck, Little John, and some many may not have heard, like Will Scarlet. While banding his group together with several not hero characters that can help to make your home base something history books talk about. Here you have a Swiss Family Robinson style home where there's a main grouping of houses at the bottom and some mingled with the trees. After each mission you come to this location to rest, meet new characters, and progress the story arc. As you progress you'll find new locations and mostly historically accurate sites, which centers around Lincoln, Nottingham, Derby, York, and Leicester. You decide which mission you want to venture on. Want to hold off on that story mission to take a raid on a priest that wandered close by? Sure, go ahead and alleviate that priest from his heavy, earthly treasures. The main story is really good, but would have been fun to have included a map editor because I would have really loved to see people's ideas on a standard raid or maybe their viewpoint on what a castle map may look like. Thankfully, for me this game genre hasn't died out. I want to thank Mimi Productions for keeping it alive. They came out with Shadow Tactics Blade of the Shogun, which is an awesome isometric stealth tactic game that advanced on the concept of these games. Plus, they recently came out with Desperados 3, which released June 2020. Robin Hood is a masterpiece and one I continue to play, not just for nostalgia's sake, but because the game still brings joy when beating a particularly hard mission. It is a shame there isn't more extras to the game, but the campaign is set up so well it's worth trying over and over again. Due to this, I say the game gets an 8 out of 10. What about you? Have you played any isometric stealth games like this? I know there are a ton out there besides those we mentioned, so you can always test them out. Make sure you let me know in the comments on what games you'd like me to check out that are similar to this style. And of course, Robin Hood Legend of Sherwood is on Steam and GOG if you want to purchase it and test the game out for yourself. I hope you enjoyed my Robin Hood The Legend of Sherwood review. If you enjoyed my video, please leave a like and a comment below on what you liked about this video. Or if you have any other games, like this one you'd like me to check out. If you'd like to help support the channel, make sure to click subscribe. This is The Still Grizzly wishing you luck with all your future games.